Hey, how's it going? Today we're gonna to be going over how to get those super cool speed ramp effects in Premiere Pro. And if you don't know what speed ramp effect is, this is kind of what it looks like. Something like that. That would've been so cool if I opened it. We're gonna cut that. I just opened it straight away. Caught it, opened it. Hmm. Took a sip with my right hand. All in one go. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so we're gonna go over a couple things in this video. Firstly, of course, we're gonna go over speed ramps. And then secondly, we're gonna go over optical flow, what it is, how to use it, and why you should use it. Just because when you're slowing down your footage, you might find it useful to use at some point in your editing process. So a while ago, I shot this poker B-roll of my family at 100 frames per second. And it finishes off with a sick shot of my dad throwing the cards into the middle. But as you can see, it doesn't really look that cool in regular motion. It definitely looks a lot cooler in slow motion, but it looks even cooler with a speed ramp added to it. It's just a lot more dynamic and energetic. So let's get into how we did that. So before we start, I'm just gonna highlight all the clips that I'm using in the project panel and right click on them. I'll hover over modify and click on interpret footage. Then I'll select assume this frame rate and change that value to 24 frames per second. What this does is just slow down the footage so that when I drag it onto my timeline, and keep it at its default speed or just at 100% speed, it's in the slowest possible motion that the clip's frame rate allows. Basically just meaning we can speed up or slow down from 100%. You don't have to do this, but I just personally prefer setting up my clips like this and all the clips in the tutorial will follow the same process. Okay, let's get into it and add the first speed ramp onto this clip of my dad throwing the two cards. Firstly, we're going to right click on the clip and navigate down to show clip keyframes and then again over to time remapping. And then finally click on speed. You'll see that a white bar appears in the middle of your clip. From now, it helps to enlarge your clip to more easily make your edits. And then you're going to navigate over to the point where you want your speed ramp to start and hold command while clicking on the white bar at the exact point you want your clip to slow down. This essentially creates a keyframe for your speed as you can see on the left in the effects controls tab. Then on the left side of the keyframe, drag the white bar up to speed up just that side of the clip. And since I shot this at 100 frames per second, normal speed would have to be at around 300%. Okay, cool, not bad. But at the moment, there's just a hard cut between the normal speed and the slow. So now we're gonna add in the ramp effect. To do this, hover your cursor over this tab on the right hand side and drag it over to the right. How far you drag it will determine how long it takes to transition between regular and slow motion. You can also adjust exactly where the transition happens on your clip by clicking and dragging in this middle section between the two tabs. And just drag it around until you've found the perfect spot. You can also drag it out to make the transition slower or drag it closer to make the transition quicker. And then if you zoom in even further and click on this middle section between the two tabs, these blue toggles will appear. By pulling the top blue toggle over to the left, you can create a nice curve which will make the speed ramp super smooth. But feel free to play around with it however you feel like. Sweet, that's pretty much it. Um, now I'll just play the full poker b-roll and hope you enjoy it. Now let's go through a different scenario. I have this drone shot of me skating along a reservoir in Hong Kong and it's shot at 30 frames per second. So unfortunately, we're not gonna be able to make it as slow as the last shot, but speed ramps can still help make this video so much more dynamic. To start off again, I'll right click on the clip, hover over show clip keyframes and then time remapping and then I'll click on speed. And then again, find your spot and hit command and add your keyframe. And this time I'm gonna speed it up on the right hand side so that the clip gradually speeds up. But now I'm just gonna go a couple frames over and add another keyframe and slow it back down so that we have this small portion of the video that is slightly faster than the rest of the video. I'll pull these tabs out on both the slow down and speed up sections. I'll also adjust these blue toggles the exact same way I did before creating a nice curve so that the transitions are smoother. And after that small fast segment, I've slowed it down to 62%, which as you know, is slower than what 30 frames per second allows us to go to. So as you can see, the video is quite choppy because there aren't enough frames for the video to go this slow. But fortunately, there's a feature on Premiere Pro called Optical Flow that allows us to fill in the frames. Basically what Optical Flow does is it estimates the motion in between two frames and creates an additional frame in between that so you can create more frames and therefore slow down the footage even more. So to enable it, just right click on the clip and navigate to speed slash duration. And under time interpolation, change the drop down option to optical flow. Then create an in and out point on your timeline over the part of the clip you've added optical flow to by pressing I and O on your keyboard. 
then press sequence and render into out so that you can properly see what the effect has done to your video. Cool, optical flow is actually quite magical. When I first learned about it, I was absolutely amazed. So hopefully you find it as cool as I do. Now, one last thing that speed ramps are great for are improving your cuts. So I have a second video, a second angle of me skating on the reservoir. And what I would usually do to get a smooth cut is just cut on action. So for example, I would line up when I push with my left foot on one clip, with the other clip and then cut on that point so that it transitions fluently from one shot to another. And this looks fine, it's all good, but I imagine this type of shot to be inside a travel video and we can play around with those quite a bit and get creative with it. So I figured let's add a speed ramp to make this cut that little bit more energetic. I'm going to keep the speed ramp we just made, but this time I will make sure to cut on action. So exactly when my left foot touches the ground is when I will cut. Then I'll bring in the next shot to finish the cut on action. And I'll of course start the clip exactly when I push with my left foot. I'll right click the clip and then enable the time remapping keyframes again. Then a couple frames over, I'll create a keyframe. On the left side of it, I'll speed it up. And on the right side of it, I'll slow it down. And then I'll drag out the tabs and adjust the blue toggles again to create another smooth speed ramp. And because I slowed it down to below 100%, I will need to add optical flow to this shot too. So if I zoom in, you can see we've created the same speed up and slow down shape as we had before, but this time over two clips, which helps smoothen out the cut and add energy to the shots. Cool, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. Also comment down below if there's any other tutorials you'd be interested in seeing and um, I'll get to work on those. But yeah, I definitely recommend implementing these speed ramps into your videos, whether it be product videos, travel videos, music videos, just get creative with it. Have fun with it and I'll see you in the next video.